to look at section 3.2, which the objectives are listed on the side here. Um, 3.2 is going to go off in a little bit of a different direction than 3.1. We're not going to be talking as much about graphs, but we're going to start by talking about uh, function notation, which is a way of writing a symbolic rule. Up until this point, our symbolic rules have taken on um, different numbers, but the same idea as far as the input variable and the output variable. How function notation changes that is, instead of writing the output variable as y, we write it like this. So these actually are considered equal, and instead of um, putting y, we write this, and this, if we were to say this, um, this is, this is a function of x. Or in other words, we would say, the f of x, with the idea that if I was going to plug in a value for x in this function, um, it would appear here and it would also appear where we would be plugging it in. I've used the example before of um, the old school way to charge for cell phone bills, and um, this cell phone bill would represent $100 a month plus uh, 5 cents a minute, really expensive. But if someone were going to ask me, well, how much is my cell phone going to be if I am on the phone for 200 minutes? The way to write that question using function notation would be, what is the f of 200? And I would write this out by plugging in 200 anywhere I see x and working it out um, 200 times 5 cents is $10. So if I was working this out, this would be $10 plus $100. So the f of 200 is equal to $110. You might see this uh, written somewhere and asked to interpret it. And um, interpreting this in real wor words is um, if 200 minutes are used, the bill would be $110. I, function notation is just referring to using um, a different way of writing Y rather than writing Y itself. We're looking at an example of another function that is written with function notation. Um, this one isn't using f, and it's not using x, and that's okay. You can pretty much use any letters that you want. Um, but this function by name would be called the h of a. And the input variable for this is the, is the letter a. Um, and the verbal rule that determines the output value for a given input is the 2a plus 7. Um, and here is a way to ask somebody to input negative 5 for A to find the output. The input is negative 5. Then the output would be negative 3. Um, and, and now they want me to give an ordered pair to represent um, the H of 4 being equal to 15. Remember that this was X before. If I plug in 4 for X, would also replace x in the ordered pair, and 15 would replace y in the ordered pair. And so the ordered pair for h of 4 being equal to 15 is 4 comma 15. Um, this time it's asking me to find what value of a would give an output value of 3. Remember that the h of a is equal to 2a plus 7. And this is saying that the h of a is also equal to 3. We need to figure out what to plug in for a to make 3 happen. You can find this in a very structured way by setting these equal to each other and going through the process that we go to to solve an equation and find out what value of a would make that true. And this is negative 2. Okay, we're going to look at a couple um, different topics that you've looked at before. Um, we've, we've used before the words replacement value 
to talk about reasonable things that we would be plugging into um, certain problems. Um, and, and practical domain is pretty much the exact same concept. And so if you see the word practical domain, um, that is referring to practical replacement values. And um, on another note, uh, when you hear the word practical range, that's talking about um, reasonable outputs. And this always fits within the context of a problem, depending on uh, what the story is behind the problem. So when you see the word practical, then you should be thinking about scenarios and situations. Okay, so here's an example. Um, you're on your way to the college to take fifth exam in anthropology course. The gas gauge on your car indicates you're almost out of gas. You stop to fill your car with gas. And um, the first thing we need to talk about is what an input and output variable is in this situation. Okay, just to help um, with overstimulation, I put a little blind up so we could see one question at a time. Um, what I had to do with this was, um, when they wanted an input and an output variable, I kind of looked ahead a little bit to see what, what direction they were going to with this. And the relationship we're going to look at is the cost of how much you are spending for gas. Um, and um, that would be a relationship with how many gallons of gas that you buy. Um, so the input, what well, depends on the output, um, the input is going to be gallons of gas. So I'm just going to use G for gas, the input variable, it's reasonable. Um, output is going to be the cost, so I'm going to say that it's C, total cost. Um, looking at the next question, they want me to um, write a verbal rule, um, determine the cost for any given number of gallons pumped. Um, assuming that, um, that the price of regular gas is $2.86 um, and nine tenths per gallon. For um, for simplicity's sake, I'm just going to make this two dollars and eighty seven um, cents per gallon. Um, okay, and I'm looking for uh, making a verbal rule. Um, and okay, I'm going to kind of combine these two um, because the verbal rule is something that I say, and the symbolic rule is writing down with symbols. And um, so I'm just going to kind of skip ahead because um, I'm going to kind of say it when I'm making a symbolic rule. Um, using uh, function notation, the way that I would start this off, because remember before we would just say y equals uh, $2.87 per gallon, but we want to use function notation. So instead of y, we're going to say the C of G equals $2.87 per gallon. And that would be my um, symbolic rule. Um, and then they want to know what the practical domain for the cost function is. That means what are replacement values that are reasonable. If my tank has a capacity of 17 gallons, the practical domain would be anywhere from 0 to 17. That's what I could plug in for G. I'm not going to buy 18 gallons of gas for a car that has a 17-gallon tank. Um, the practical range for this well, I know that if I was buying no gas, that uh, the practical range would start with zero. And I know if I am buying 17 gallons of gas at 287 a gallon, that would give me a cost of uh, 48.79. Okay. Represent the output by comma, by C of G, or write the equation. Um, we already did that. We kind of did it right from the get-go. And um, the last thing that they ask us to do is determine um, what the C of 15 is. What are they asking us? What does this 15 represent? It's plugged in for G. This must be 15 gallons. And they must be asking me, what is the cost of 15 gallons? 
using this verbal rule right here, um, I'm going to interpret plugin evaluate 287 times 15 is forty-three dollars and five cents. Okay. Here is a table. Um, and this table is being used to describe um, a function, um, and it's not really telling us what the function is, but they are giving us input and their corresponding outputs. Whenever you have a table, always the, the row that's on top is the input. If you had a table that was vertical, this one would always be the input, the first column, and this would always be the output. Um, they're asking us for the domain of f, and that represents this function. Um, the domain refers to all the x values. We're going to express that as a set of numbers. So we're going to use these curly brackets. Um, the domain here is negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. This is how you um, express a set of numbers. Um, the range, this is referring to all the y values. And um, in this case, 5, 4, 2, negative 1, 1, 3, 5, 6. I do not care that these are not really perfectly in ascending order. Uh, comp of course, Compass might care, but I don't care. Um, so you can put them any way that you want to put them. Um, that should work. Domain and range. Here's a couple uh, extra um, examples of questions that are in function notation form. Um, for this one right here, we're looking at the F before. We're plugging in 4 wherever we see X. And in this case, the F before is 7. Um, G of N. We're looking at g of negative 3. Wherever I see n, I'm going to plug in negative 3, which is negative 9 plus 5, which is answer negative 4. What if I have an example where um, we're given a function, but we're asked to figure out what the x is that gives us an output of 3? Easy to determine if you've set x plus 1 equal to 3 and solve. x is 2. Same one here. Um, we need to find what x value makes the g of x equal to 11. Fifteen divided by 5 is 3. 